In 2025, a brief segment on Chinese state television showed a young engineer holding something that barely seemed real. Between his fingers rested a tiny device with thin translucent wings. It made no sound, just a faint shimmer of movement in the air, small enough to be mistaken for an insect. To most viewers, it was only impressive. To others, unsettling. The device was clearly designed for stealth. The broadcaster called it a micro-drone. Its creators claimed it could slip through a window, record high-definition video, and vanish again without a trace. Within hours, the footage had reached American research labs. Across the Pacific, engineers were already racing to design their own swarms, machines that could fly lower, move quieter, and disappear just as completely as China's mechanical mosquito. Over the past decade, drones have become the defining weapon of modern warfare. They're fast to build, easy to replicate, and far cheaper than tanks or missiles. From Ukraine's shattered fields to the deserts of the Middle East, pilotless aircraft now crowd the skies, spotting targets, dropping explosives, and turning conflict zones into testing grounds for increasingly automated warfare. As both the United States and China pour billions into new generations of unmanned systems, one truth has become clear. The age of remote war has already arrived. Even as militaries mature their larger unmanned aerial vehicle fleets, a quieter race is unfolding, literally beneath the radar. Engineers are developing a new class of micro-drones, small enough to rest in the palm of a hand or perch on a fingertip. These miniature craft, weighing less than a pound and sometimes no more than a few grams, can fly, hover, and record like their larger cousins. Some resemble birds, others imitate insects, beating their wings so lightly they can disappear into the background hum of a city street. Stealth microweapons trade strength for subtlety. They can slip through windows, scout collapsed buildings, or reach areas too dangerous for soldiers or larger aircraft. Defense experts say the shrinking drone technology adds the benefits of stealth and the potential for covert action. Swarms of these machines could one day saturate a target area, overwhelming defenses with motion that's nearly impossible to track. A drone that looks and moves like a mosquito doesn't need stealth panels. It only needs to look ordinary. That illusion gives it power far beyond its cost. A handful of these small disposable devices can tie down soldiers and sensors alike, forcing enemies to waste time and ammunition on ghosts. Yet as the technology shrinks, strategy and law fall behind. Militaries are still debating what these weapons are truly for, while diplomats and watchdogs struggle to define how to control something so small, so cheap, and so hard to see. It's within this oversight vacuum that China has made its move. In June 2025, Chinese state television unveiled a drone that challenges the very idea of what a weapon could one day look like. Developed by a robotics lab at the National University of Defense Technology in Hunan province, the prototype measured barely 1.3 centimeters long, with two thin leaf-shaped wings and three hair-like legs. During the broadcast, a student engineer held the device between his fingers and said calmly, quote, Here in my hand is a mosquito-like robot, specially suited to information reconnaissance and special missions on the battlefield. Moments later, it lifted off under smartphone control. It didn't move exactly like a real mosquito, but its size and shape made the imitation convincing enough to fool the eye. The so-called mosquito drone appears built for one thing above all, to disappear. At a size that naturally slips past most sensors and quiet enough to blend into ordinary background noise, it embodies the principle of invisibility without ever having to claim it. Its flapping wings mimic an insect's erratic motion, while smartphone control keeps operation simple and deniable. CCTV framed the demonstration as a technological experiment, not as an explicit weapons test. However, showing it on the network's military channel sent a different message. It was proof of how far Beijing's defense laboratories have advanced and how deliberately they're pushing the boundaries of covert surveillance. Observers quickly noted what the official broadcast left unsaid. A device like this could, in theory, slip through a window, scan a secure facility, or record activity unnoticed. Analysts discussed its possible uses in reconnaissance or electronic spying, though there's no evidence it has been deployed in the field. The phrase special missions remained undefined, and perhaps deliberately so. The limitations are obvious. Its battery lasts only minutes, and it can carry little beyond a small sensor or camera. 
Yet in modern warfare, even a few minutes can change the balance. Dozens could map or disrupt defenses. One alone could even erode trust, leaving every buzz in the air to feel like surveillance. The demonstration itself served a psychological purpose. Showing what might be possible can be more powerful than using it. In a world where information decides wars, China's smallest drone may already be one of its most dangerous. The U.S. sees the same future and is racing to deny it to rivals. Across defense labs, universities, and startups, American engineers are shrinking machines and teaching them to work together. This contest is part of a global push to master micro-scale flight. Norway's Black Hornet, widely used by Western militaries, has already proven the value of palm-sized surveillance. The newest Black Hornet 4 extends range and battery life while improving wind resistance, earning the U.S. Defense Department Blue UAS designation earlier this year. The U.S. Air Force is developing its own micro-UAVs as well, though none have yet been publicly deployed. For now, U.S. programs focus less on hardware than on control, instead building the AI, communications, and swarm coordination needed to overcome short flight times. If micro-drones can share data, relay signals, and take turns scouting, shared control can turn dozens of short-lived drones into one persistent system. Even so, the limits are clear. Zachary Callenborn, a CSIS advisor on drone warfare, notes that the small size giving these systems stealth also restricts range and endurance. He says that, quote, the problem with micro-drones is that their small size also means small batteries. Bird-sized platforms can be effective in swarms and may carry compact explosives, but their short range keeps operators close to their targets. Callenborn warns that miniaturization could also enable covert operations that are difficult to trace, a possibility that remains theoretical but is increasingly feasible. That tension shapes current U.S. research. Some projects treat micro-drones as defensive tools, interceptors to destroy small threats, decoys to draw enemy fire, or sacrificial units to shield larger assets. Tyler Schwan Saltzman, founder of Edgerunner AI, calls software the true force multiplier. His company develops machine vision, inter-drone communication, and autonomous decision systems so swarms can function with minimal oversight. He notes that, quote, we have missile technology to attack drones, but it's very expensive. A reminder that low-cost swarms are far more sustainable on the modern battlefield. The greatest danger may lie in the uncertainty they create. A micro-drone gathering intelligence looks no different from one preparing to attack. When detected near sensitive sites, such ambiguity could spark overreaction or escalation before facts are known. Extensive legal parameters already exist for the public and military use of larger drones, but extending those standards to smaller systems remains unfinished work. William C. Banks, the founding director of Syracuse University's Institute for National Security and Counterterrorism, argues that most drone laws stem from international humanitarian principles that apply regardless of treaties yet they are frequently violated with little consequence. He cites recent Russian drone incursions into Estonia and Sweden as examples of such impunity. Banks notes a growing tendency to stretch existing laws to cover micro-units if they're used as weapons, but surveillance remains almost entirely unregulated. He argues that, quote, if they may cause disrupted damage and injure people or destroy property, the laws apply. Still, surveillance remains largely beyond the reach of international law. Every nation conducts some form of spying, he explains, operating in what he calls, quote, a sort of gray area. For now, international efforts to define accountability lag far behind technological progress. What began as a race for smaller, smarter weapons is ending as a contest over control itself. In the wars to come, victory may belong not to the side with the most firepower, but to the one whose machines act first, vanish fastest, and leave no trace at all.